Hello, greetings and welcome to the broadcast. I'm your host, Maggie Cavanaugh, and I am here today with my brother in Christ, Rob Shepard. Rob, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much, Maggie. Appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. Oh, I am so excited about this broadcast for several reasons. And if you guys want to know more about Rob, obviously it'll be in the chat stream and and in, in the um, if information area if you're watching this on YouTube. But if you're not watching this on YouTube and if you're listening to it on a podcast or watching it on TV, then I just want to share a little bit about my little brother. And I call him a little brother because he's younger than me, obviously. But he's also the son of a dear friend, Robert Shepard. I've had Robert on the show a couple times. He's an amazing man of God, family man. And I was just so excited when he told me about your book. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, good. Thank so you. good. Thank you. So Rob is a pastor of a church in Virginia. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the broadcast. He's also an author, but he's a husband and a father. And I'm just so excited to have him here to talk about his latest book. And it is on a topic I'm incredibly passionate about. And this book has been out for a while and I just hadn't had the chance to have him on the broadcast yet, but it's on a fence. So y'all hold your seat, uh, share this out. If you're watching it on social to your friends, families, coworkers, anybody, because everyone, everyone has dealt with a spirit of offense. I call it a spirit because it just, it, it comes in, it eradicates everything. It causes all kinds of havoc and division. And if you have ever dealt with this, you know what it's like. It stifles you. It shuts you down and it loses, you lose the ability to be heard and seen by those you're trying to reach. So Rob, what inspired you to write this great book on offense? Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. It, for me, it started in, in 2020. We all know the, the world shut down, the pandemic I had more time on my hands. Um, but what I found was that a lot of people with more time on their hands started consuming even more um, just news and media. And, and what I found is when you spend hours listening to people rant about all the problems, it starts to just plant little, little seeds in your mind. And, um, I felt like when we started to come back in person, everyone was more offended than, than normal. Like humans have always been offended by something, but it felt like it was just ramped up and the, the name calling or the amount of like unwilling to listen and just, um, you know, if you don't say something that is on the exact script of whatever political party they follow, you start getting attacked. And it's like, wow, I didn't even mean that. And so, you know, we try to reopen our church and there's people who are offended about opening too soon and wearing masks, not wearing masks. Like you, you, you're just offending everyone. And it's like, I, we're not trying to, we're, we're literally just trying to do the best that we can. And uh, it just felt like offense was everywhere. And so I didn't know of a lot of other resources out there. And so I said, okay, well, if, if I don't know of a good one, um, God, would you use me to speak some truth mm -hmm. in, into some lives and try to speak into this to try to help uh, Christians deal with their offense? Wow, that is so true. What you're saying is so incredibly true because you it's it's like you, either way, people are going to be upset. Yeah, it's like we do not have is is if if you say it one way, one person's going to be like, ah, I don't know about that, and if you say it another way, another person is, and it, and what happens is is it causes us to really feel stifled and being able to even communicate effectively with people out there. I certainly understand. You know, you mentioned uh, the political differences and stuff. Oh my gosh, that is such a hot thing where people get so offended, yeah. and it's so sad because the, you know everybody has their own moral compass sure. and they, who am I, even though I'm very passionate about my own beliefs, sure. I am not going to go and cause division among my brethren because of the fact that they just happen to believe a different way that I do. Sure. Sure. Or am I going to point out someone else's sin because they sin different than me? Yeah, exactly. You know? So it's just, it's like, oh my goodness, can we just get along? Yeah. <laughs> so the name of the book, if you guys are not, or if you guys have not, I didn't say it in the beginning, but I wanted to pull you in with the topic, but it's called When Offense Knocks. And I love the subtitle here, okay? Because it says, get offended less to change the world more. I want y'all to let that sink in for a second. I want you to think about that. And because the reality is, is that you, there was a quote and I'm get, I've got it here on my phone because this stood out to me so much. This is what you said, Rob. It said, Jesus has called us to do more than react to hurt, to the offenses of the world. He has called us to respond to the hurt in a way that changes the world. That yeah. so resonates with my spirit. 
Yeah. Us, we are literally living in a time where we're either going to bring people closer to Jesus or we're going to push them farther away. That's right. And so the reality is, is we have to walk in love and be able to communicate effectively where the porcupine people, and when I say porcupine people, the people that bump into everybody and it, ooh, yeah. ooh, you know, everybody's got that stuff. So sure. being a pastor of a church, you've probably seen this throughout. And I'm assuming you probably have preached this message prior to writing the book. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a lot of my books start off as sermon series. Um, and so I, I kind of, I, 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 wade into the water and say, okay, what resonates and what is God using and, and what do I have more to say about? And so uh, this was definitely one that resonated and uh, I had a lot more to say about. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But this wasn't your first rodeo with writing. So no. let's talk a little bit about your previous book. Yeah. Yeah. So I, this was my fourth book. Um, my first one came out uh, right around when I planted the church about 11 years ago. Uh, and it is called, um, even if you were perfect, someone would crucify you. And it was really based off, I, I got a, I got a really ugly letter about one of my sermons and I, I just was allowing, it was an anonymous letter. I was allowing it to consume me. And, uh, I read it four times and was just like mm -hmm. hung up on this person's words. And I heard that little still small voice whisper to me, even if you preached a perfect <laughs> sermon, someone would crucify you. Sure. And it gave me such freedom that I balled up the letter. I threw it away and didn't think about it again. And that became kind of a mantra of mine. Okay, I'm not perfect. And even if I was, someone would crucify me. And so uh, it's really about people pleasing. My second book is called You Misspelled Christian. And uh, <laughs> it, is, it is really about, uh, it started as, as a joke. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge uh, sports fan and, and, and uh, was a, I'm a big Lakers fan. And there was a time period uh, before Kobe Bryant passed away where people would get online and they would say, you know, LeBron is the best player in the league. And I would just kind of chirp in as, as a joke to say, you misspelled Kobe. And people would always laugh at that. And I started thinking about, well, how often do we <laughs> as Christians say something that misrepresents who Jesus is? Come so on. You misspelled, wow. you misspelled Christian. And then uh, my third book is, uh, it's all about relationships. It's called Kill the Jerk. Um, and uh, it is uh, it, it started as a book uh, for married couples, but it, it moved on to any relationship. And so it's not just for married, it's for anyone. And uh, it really, I, I wrote a chapter called Kill the Jerk. And it was really about, um, you know, it's, it's really difficult to have healthy relationships when we all have this inner jerk inside of us. And until we allow Jesus to kill the jerk inside of us and deal with our issues, we're not going to have healthy relationships because we're constantly focused on, well, they're the problem, they're the issue. But the truth is we all have our own issues. And so it's a book, whether you're single, married, anything, anyone can apply, but it's called Kill the Jerk. And then my fourth one is When a Fence Knocks. Man, I feel like I'm missing out. I've got to go on Amazon and order all these books because they're so <laughs> amazing. So are these available also on uh, audiobooks? Uh, the, the first one is the only one that is on, on okay. audio uh, so, so far, but hopefully one day we'll get the other ones on there. Yeah, I absolutely would love that. My husband drives a lot. And so we are constantly listening to Audible in the busy world that everyone's in. But you also have done some, um, you, didn't you have a uh, a blog, so to speak, that you were doing for a while? Are you still doing the blog? Yeah, no, uh, I, I did. I did a blog for years called RobShep.com. And uh, it, it, it transitioned into my writing career. It's how I discovered I liked writing. Uh, but I wrote five days a week on my blog and it got to the point where I was like, okay, I want to write books. I can't do it all. I have a family. I have, I have twins. Um, I have a church. And so something has to give. So robship.com still exists, but it's my website for speaking or, or for my books. Um, it, it's no longer a blog post. All that thought content goes into my books. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I think that's how a lot of people discover their passion for writing is they'll start out with a Facebook post yep. and then they'll be over to a blog. And then yep. all of a sudden, next thing you know, they got a book coming out. I'm so grateful that you answered the call because it is so incredibly important. And when God shows us something, it's not just for us yeah. and we get to share it with the world. So I want to go back to a little bit about the most recent book, even though I'm, I, we will probably visit back on some of those topics because I love, love, love the titles that you came up with because they are they will make you stop yeah you know, like inner jerk what, what? Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, and then those are great but when it comes to offense and you know i was sharing before the broadcast y'all listen we we live in a time where everybody is offended about something and so when i was going through the chapters of the book and i was looking at the main topic i thought 
this dude thinks like I do. You know, he thinks like I do because I truly believe that we should be known for what we are about rather than what we are against. When you start off pointing out, you know, this, this and this, you're they're going like this. No one's going to listen to you. It's an automatic shut off. Is that kind of your concept as well? Or why don't you elaborate on how it affects others when we come across that way? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I, I'm not convinced we can fully get rid of offense and that's not what my book is about. Um, right. I, there are some things it, it could be from our upbringing. It could be our emotional, uh, you know, uh, capacity. There's a whole bunch of reasons why we get offended. I'm not sure we can get rid of them all. Right. Um, but what we can do is we can learn to respond to offense in a way that honors Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think in order to do that, we've got to think through our strategy and is what we're doing working when we get offended and we respond, does it cause people to love Jesus? Does it cause people to love other people or does it push them away? And to your point, what I see happen so often is we just start yelling at the darkness and we just start yelling at things we don't uh, agree with, but yelling at the darkness doesn't turn on the lights. In order to turn on the lights, we've got to have a conversation. We've got to do more than just yell. And if you think about it in practical terms, if you told me, you know, your favorite restaurant, let's just say, you know, your favorite restaurant was, uh, you know, Outback. And I lead off with, I hate Outback. That's the worst restaurant ever. Never in my life have I changed my opinion because someone attacked what I just said. Okay. I've I've never changed my opinion because someone came at me and told me what an idiot I was or how dumb something. I've never been like, tell me more. Tell me more about how bad I am. I've never done that. But I have changed my mind through relationships and I have changed my mind through grace and conversations. And sometimes those conversations are hard conversations where you have to speak the truth. But we can do that with love. Hmm. Wow. That is so true. I love what you said about shouting to the darkness doesn't make it light. You know, I mean, we, we tend to do that. We, we tend to, and I think a lot of it, and you brought this out in the book as well, you know, offense generally comes from some type of hurt, you know, except especially a past hurt. And you also alluded to potentially, you know, even our upbringing, you know, I mean, somebody can say something, remind you of something that your second grade teacher said to you and you haven't really dealt with and so forth. And it is, I, I found, at least in my own experiences, generally, it's a matter of misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or misinterpretation. Yeah. Or someone else's perspective. Exactly. And uh, I love the outback analogy because, yeah, no matter what they say, it is not going to trump what you think about a steak at Outback. Yeah. So what are some of the things that uh, when you were writing the book, you were kind of like, Oh, wait, what are, what are the, like, you know, there's the key points and then there's the supporting points and things like that. Your message in your heart overall in, and I love what you said about not being able to get rid of it because it's true. It's going to be here. You know, yeah. Jesus comes back. If you have a flesh, yeah, you have That's a right. pulse, you know, you are going to sometime get offended, but it's not so much about that. Would you say some of your keys is how to overcome being offended? Yeah, I, I, I think I tried to focus on, what can we do? So, so once you get offended, now what? What do I do? And so what are the practical things I can do that will help me respond to offense in a way that honors Jesus? And so um, I think that there's a, a few, there's probably more than what I came up with in the book, but in the book, I, I give a few key things that I think that uh, when we put the relationships ahead of offense, we focus on, on friendships, uh, when we mm-hmm. focus on hospitality and uh, we sp- focus on influence, I think those three things can help us to respond to offense in a way that that may actually win over the other side. Wow. Wow. That's so good. And listen, you know, in that I, I this this is an opportunity y'all, for not only for you to personally grow, but your sphere of influence. This is something where you can sit down and do this with your home group. Uh, you can actually um, use this book. Uh, you could do an online book challenge with people, but finding the topic that is going to resonate with every single person. Cause see, not every book applies to us, but this one does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's so true. You know, I was uh, just checking when I was checking into you, I noticed you're, you're pretty big on social media. <laughs> I, I do like social media. Yeah. Yeah. We, what was we, that pull? Was it to share the love of Christ or was it, it would tell us a little bit about your social media journey. 
Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I think I started off with just like a lot of people. I just liked the entertainment aspect of it. I liked connecting with, you know, friends that I went to college with that you no longer see and kind of staying up with them. Um, but social media for me really took off when uh, the pandemic hit and I kept seeing people on Facebook were posting their TikTok videos. And I was like, I don't know what this is like this. What is this thing? And so I went to that app and I, I just looked at it for about a week. I would spend a few minutes a day on it. And I was just like, this is a weird app. Like, I don't understand it. I don't get it. People are doing these dances. Like, I, I don't I don't get it at all. Um, but after about a week, I started to find myself wanting to get on the app a lot more. And I started to, to kind of get a hang of it. And uh, in the pandemic, I just started making videos. And it was for me, it was a creative outlet because the world was shut down. And I'd lost, like, I, I wasn't preaching as much. I wasn't speaking as much. I wasn't doing all the things that I used to do. And so it was just a fun outlet. And what's been amazing blessing for me is that uh, my family is now involved in it. And so we do fun little skits or fun, uh, you know, games that we'll do together. And uh, it's created an audience. And, and somehow we stumbled upon 156,000 followers. And uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I absolutely love that. I use I just stumbled across them because obviously it's offering something out there. So tell us, you have twins. How old yes. are your twins? Yeah, they're 12 years old, a boy and a girl, Reese and Hayden. I love it. And I love that you're making a family activity of it because there's a lot of bad stuff out there on social. 100%. Yep. And, uh, you know, we all know that, you know, but you're out there shining a light. You're out there offering an alternative and where people can stumble across something fun and so forth. So I absolutely love it. I'm not a big TikToker, sure. but just hearing about you and your family being on there makes me want to go check it out. So are yes. you guys on Insta too or just yep. TikTok? Yeah, yeah. Yes, um, on on Instagram, uh, I, I don't do a lot of Twitter, but I am on. I have a Twitter account, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok are, are the prim primary ones. And I, I will say, um, any social media, there is good and there is bad. We mm -hmm. we have to filter out and uh, and yeah. and try to make sure that we're focusing on the good. For me personally, one of the draws uh, to social media is in, in Jesus's day, what a crowd would gather around a well. It was a gathering place. Well, today our gathering places are social media. And right. so I want to go where the people are to represent ultimately Jesus and to be a positive light and to say, Hey, listen, you don't have to cuss in your videos and uh, you, you don't have to, you know, have scandalous things like you can create positive content. And then ultimately I want to try to point people to Jesus. I love it. I love it. I love the heart behind it. And that's my same theory on the importance of us dominating the airwaves with yeah. the light that does overtake the darkness, not by shouting at it, saying, oh, you got to change by actually living the life that Jesus died for that's and right. shining that love that only, you know, only we can only love people through Christ. I mean, I because our own natural ability is to walk in, in our hurts and our past pain and all of those things. But whenever we are truly applying the word of God to our lives. You can't hate people and be a Christian. That's right. That's you right. Just can't. Exactly. That's and, right. and if you think you can, you better check yourself. You know, That's I always, right. I always talk about what the young rappers say. They always say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> but right. if you do not stop and take time to look in the mirror and say, how am I loving people today? Yeah. It's a question I ask myself all the time. And, you yeah. know, I'll be honest, Rob, sometimes I don't like the answer. Sure. You know, I'm yeah. just like, man, yesterday, you know, I was really short in my yeah. attitude with that customer service rep at, and I won't name the phone company, but yeah. y'all been there, you know, sure. I mean, we've all been there where it wears down on us. And the worst thing ever is for us to come across as jerks, as you would say, yeah. or, or allowing our flesh to overtake what God is trying to do. Because, you know, you might be, there's this whole saying, you might be the only Jesus someone sees that day That's right. by your behavior. So I absolutely love that. So when it comes to our behavior and of course, being a pastor for 11 years yeah. and, um, and, I, and by the way, thank you for throwing away the letter. Oh yeah. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for throwing yeah. away the letter. You guys yeah. get beat up. Yep. You can never, I mean, it's you know, true. oh, well, that wasn't theological or that just, you know, that hurt my feelings yep. or, you know, my son was there and he deals with that. Why did you say that? And, you know, it just, it's a really touchy feely thing. So yeah. within being a pastor, what is your encouragement to other pastors out there that are dealing with offense in their church? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think one thing is, 
Um, not that this makes it right, but if, if Jesus offended people, we need to understand we will too. And so um, don't be shocked when people get upset with you. Uh, number two, ultimately the opinion that matters is God's. And um, we're not perfect. And so I will take, I will take criticism. I will take coaching. Um, I will take someone pointing out, you know, something that, that maybe I didn't see. Um, but I need to make sure that it's coming from someone that does care and love and not just someone that's blasting me. Mm. And if someone is blasting me, then their opinion, they don't have my best interests in mind. And so as hard as it is, my ultimate opinion and worth is found in Jesus, not in what someone says to me. And so I would, I would highly encourage, it's tough to do, but um, the reason we don't quit is because we're not doing ministry for people. We're doing it for Jesus. And mm. until he releases me, this is, this is what I'm called to do. Wow. Wow. I absolutely love that. That is so important for all of us, whether you're a pastor or you're leading a small group or whether you're doing a broadcast, whatever, because we're always going to have the, you know, quote haters or whatever. And haters don't have our best interests in part. Um, you know, I'm not familiar with the TikTok platform very well, but is there trolls out there on TikTok? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Majorly. And the, so for the most part, um, I have found the people that interact with my videos are incredibly kind. Uh, a lot of them are not Christians, um, but they pretty quickly, they at least learn that I don't use profanity and they learn that. And so um, I've been able to de develop some great friendships uh, with people from all, all different walks of life. Um, but anytime a video starts to go viral, you start to interact with people that are not in your audience. Mm -hmm. And it's great because you start to get new people that, you know, follow you but you also always get the trolls. And so anytime I've had, we've had multiple viral videos. Um, we've had videos that uh, our highest video hit 59 million views. Um, anytime we have a video that gets over 10,000 views, the trolls start to come out. And I've had okay. people who have, have called out my weight. They've made fun of me. I've had people uh, who have said really ugly things about my kids that I've just had to delete their comments. Um, the, the trolls do come out. But for me, again, I don't know these people. And right. so they're not speaking truth into my life. And so I'm not going to allow them to dictate my day or, or, or what, what we've got going, going on. And so, um, you know, it, it's a, it's a quick interaction to say, Hey, uh, there are times where I'll try to interact with them and just say, Hey, what you said was, was rude. Um, and see, and if they're willing to apologize or back down, then you may have won over a friend, but if they're not willing to, then it's a, it's a quick, okay, we, we we're going to move on. Wow, that is su such good advice because, you know, we have to be kind of thick skinned sometimes when we're out there and because we are being vulnerable. We are yeah. like you know, right now, you know, somebody could come on here and say something ugly. I remember early on when I first started broadcasting, I was doing it on Periscope. And man, the trolls were just so bad. Yeah, I seen yeah. Ryan Roy on here a few minutes ago. I asked where I met Ryan. And uh, so <laughs> he's a great guy. And um we used to have to deal with this so much yep. and we would have what we call block parties. You know, we would be like, oh, and I would always like you give them the opportunity. Uh, you know, maybe they're just having a bad day or they're grumpy or, you know, maybe I reminded them of their sister Ethel who they can't stand or something, yeah. who knows, you know, but the reality is, is that hurting people hurt people. And I've never understood why trolls are so vicious. Yeah. And uh, I think I read that you called them like, keyboard warriors or something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of the talk about that. Talk yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there there are some people that will be jerks to your face. But right. I found that for the most part, most people lose their courage when it's face to face. When you're sitting behind a keyboard, there is some safety in people can just they they're they're more unfiltered and they'll just say whatever because they're like there's no account there's no accountability. Yeah. And so um People can be really rude and, and they're like keyboard warriors that it's like, you know, you talk to them in person and they're meek and they're kind. And, and then you talk to them online and they're just blasting everybody. Uh, and it's like, OK, like uh, you need you need to represent Jesus behind that keyboard, too. Man, that's so important because I have seen that. I've seen that in my own life. I was talking one time to a guy over at uh, the Way FM and he was like, you know, Maggie, I read what they said about you on that podcast, you know, and I'm so sorry that people are so mean. And I'm thinking to myself. <laughs> I didn't read it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not going to affect me whether I read it or not. I mean, sure. I can even track down because when you start podcasting, you're on all these different platforms. And so you don't even to keep, I can't keep up with all the yeah. comments. Now I yeah. am a little more aware and especially on like YouTube, I will take and um, have it to where I have to review the comment. 
sure. you know, before something's yeah. there. But I, I don't know how to do that on all the platforms. And frankly, I think sometimes it'll just kind of it'll make me come back and say question and myself, which is not self-evaluation is not a bad thing. Yeah. Because whenever, you know, and I'll and I'll ask myself, okay. What did that come off strong? Was that arrogant? Was that prideful? Was that, you know, and it, it puts me in check, but usually they're just mean. Yep. They're just mean and yep. unhappy. And, you know, we can't, you know, there's that, you can't fight that same spirit with that, the same spirit, you know, you can't fight fire with fire, yep. you know? And so the reality is, is we have to be the salt and light. We have to be the bigger person. We have to take that higher road and doing that leads to, I used to get around and say, I want to be unoffendable. Yeah. And I would, that was one of my life goals. And yeah. then I found it, it was almost impossible. It, it really is. I was like, you know, as hard as I try, I yeah. still would find areas. Now, I'll tell you one thing, though, I have learned and um, and I hope this doesn't come off arrogant or prideful, yeah. but I have learned to quickly take my thoughts captive. Yeah. And that keeps me from getting caught up in rehearsing in my mind the offense. Yeah. 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 And well, I would I would add to that, too. Not only do I think we cannot get rid of all offense, but there are some things we should be offended by. Um, there, there are sometimes when, when people will joke with me, uh, they act like I'm not allowed to get angry or have any emotions because I wrote a book on offense, but it's like, no, there are some things that are offendable. Let's just handle it in a way that represents Jesus. Um, mm. you don't have to say, you don't have to agree with everyone. You don't have to say that everything everyone is doing is great. There are sometimes when people need to be, uh, called out in truth with grace. Um, yes. and there's times to have hard conversations. Let's just do it in a strategic way that that makes a difference. Yes. And I think that I think you hit it right on the head is is the grace part about it. I think when we come off harsh, you know, like I said before, we shut them down. Recently, I did a broadcast and I am always and I actually I actually seen April Messler here. She's on here from Oklahoma. And I, you know, I sit on a board of her, her kingdom united industry, right? Kingdom united, bringing people together. And I did a broadcast a couple of weeks ago and I messaged her and I'm like, hey, I am going to have to tell you now that I did a broadcast that might get ruffle some feathers because I was calling out a Ouija board that yeah. is marketed to Christians. And sure. so sometimes we do have to speak out and yeah. we do not have to be afraid to speak the truth, but, but in love and as a warning sign and so forth. So Rob, I could talk to you for hours. I Aww, absolutely, I wish you. your church was closer. I'd come visit you. That Listen, y'all, he's got a church in Virginia. I'll put the link in the chat stream. So if you are in the Virginia beach area, it's within an hour drive. And I encourage you to go check it out or if you live over there, but Rob, if you can leave the audience with the key. Yeah. What would that key be? Yeah. Well, um, you know, I, I, I would say that there's so many things that I, I could drop in there, but I would say that at the end of the day, um, our worth matters the most because of who Jesus called us to be. And mm -hmm. once you know your truth and you know his truth and you know what he says about you, it just makes you less offendable. And yes. people are going to say things about us all the time. Um, but if it doesn't match up with what God says, then we can bless and release it. Wow, that's so good. Listen, guys, it's robshep.com, uh, speaking truth with love. And I absolutely love that. And do not forget, that, um, you know, that side title of his book, it can literally penetrate your heart. Get offended less to change the world more. OK, no one's going to be changed by your opinion. People are going to be changed by your walk and your reflection of Jesus Christ. So, Rob, I want to thank you for being on the broadcast today. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. I appreciate you sharing your platform with me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Love it. And uh, we'll have to have you back on here when you write that next book, because I would we'll like a book it. on social media personally. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> how to navigate the waters, you know? Sure. So, we'll see what we Rob, can do. Yes, yeah, absolutely. God bless you. We'll see you guys here next time on Keys to Your Best Life. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.